Hello, this is Katie. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, for Marker Monday number 13, I'm going to be using Sugar Pea Designs Hay Fall, which is super cute, and I could not resist it with these two bears. And I stamped a few extra sheets. I usually do that when I have them all in my Misty anyway, but this was the one that stamped the best, which was the first one. So I'm going to be using my Tri-Blend markers, Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend to color everything in and I really like using the tan shades color on any like wood or logs or anything like that um, and when there's something kind of loosely drawn like this where there's lines like in the wood I'll usually put the dark marker over those lines because there would be emphasis on those, if that makes sense. So it looks a little messy when I'm coloring it, but I'm treating the lines kind of like shadows, if you would color that way. And then with these tri-blends, they do have a nib end or a bullet nib um, tip, but if you are careful and just kind of go lightly, you can get really skinny areas like that little branch coming off to the left with the leaves on it. You just have to go really light and there's actually a couple images on here that I go outside of the lines on. It's just easier with a brush tip which um, Spectrum Noir they did come out with some brush tip tri-blends but I think there's only 24 and there are 48 of these. Um, I'm sure they'll come out with the rest of them but uh, yeah so you could look into those. I think the color variant may be a tiny bit different on those um, but it is the same idea that um, they went with to kind of fix their colors when they came out with the tri blends. This orange combination is, it's a pretty dark orange, um, but I like how it turned out and I think it's a really good combo for pumpkins. Um, I have yet to kind of get like a favorite, favorite Copic pumpkin-y brown, not pumpkin-y brown, pumpkin-y orange combination that I love. Uh, so I just reach for the tri blend one more often. And then the set comes with, uh, you know, like one acorn and one of each leaf, but I off camera stamped some extra acorns and extra leaves because I'm going to be adding to the scene and I'm going to be making two cards out of these. This video is a little bit longer than normal. I did speed it up two times, but, um, I do like to include making the card. I hate to just have a sheet for marker Monday and then color it in and then not show you what I did with it. So I decided to film the whole thing. And then for each of these leaves, I just kind of picked some leaves here and there. I think I did all of this style and just put some red in some different places. This is the mid of the dark red blend, which is the lighter dark red. The other one is called dark red shades, which is darker. I'm going to be using that on the bear's scarf. And then I'm taking the mid orange and kind of filling in the rest. So I get a realistic looking leaf that goes from red to orange and has different spots of red. Then I'll be doing some of the other leaves from orange to yellow. Uh, I'm not including any green on these cards. So this is 100% fall, no green allowed. So then I'm just using the same mid orange to throw some color into the rest of the leaves. And then I'll just take the darkest on the citrus blend and blend out the rest of them. Now I used my my favorite things extreme black hybrid ink, which hadn't been giving me any troubles, but there are a couple spots on this bear holding the pumpkin on his nose area. I have some trouble with the ink bleeding the ink I stamped it with, the My Favorite Things ink. And then on the bird, I just, I don't know the rhyme or reason as to which parts are going to bleed and which aren't. Maybe it's just too much, like the little bird's eye was too concentrated. I don't know. I know that I stamped the images over with ink at least twice because the first stamp of brand new stamps was going to be not enough. Um, I guess I'm just annoyed. I don't know. Maybe I need to be more careful coloring and not go over their eyes. But like this little squirrel had no problem. Um, but the little birdie, which I'm going to color in blue, he ends up 
the ink bleeds a little bit. I still keep him and use him, but it's just annoying. Um, I'm using the darker end of the pale pink blend to color in everyone's ears. And then this is my birdie. And it must be when I go over his eye. Yeah, it smeared his eye. I think maybe it just, it didn't have enough surface area to dry in time. So I smeared it and it looks like he's crying, which is sad, but oh well. Um, then I just put a dab of the dark end of the orange for his beak. And I'll be using these two browns for the bears. I like the color or how the color turned out on the left bear over the right bear. The earth brown shades, the color combination, there's something about it that isn't quite right. Like I think the darkest one is lighter than the mid or even it's at least lighter than the mid color and it might be lighter than the lightest. I'm not really sure. I don't know what they were going for, but um it just kind of feels mixed up. He turns out okay, but I do prefer the the bear on the left. So I'm just kind of putting the darkest and then the the darkest where I think maybe shadows might be and then the mid and just filling it out a little bit more than that. And then the lightest, I'm just going to fill in the rest of the space there. His left hand that's barely peeking around the right side of the pumpkin here. Um, I did color in with light, but I end up getting some orange from the pumpkin on his hand. So I'm going to, and there I kind of smeared his nose. It must just be like a concentrated ink nose problem. Um, I end up getting some orange on his hand. So I use my zero Copic marker to clear out the orange. And then I'll just go back in with the darker of the color of the bear, the dark end. I think it's the red, red brown blend. Uh, and then fill in his hand with that. It would be shadowy over there anyway. I don't know why I made it light. And then I forgot to color his pumpkin earlier. So we will fill him in. And then I'll make his little pumpkin leaf orange and yellow. Then we want to color in our sunflower. Um, I'm just kind of guessing I'm doing some oranginess and then some yellow and then for the middle instead of um, the middle of the sunflowers are like a pretty dark brown almost black but I'm just going to use the end of my tan shades for the dark brown and dark brown in the middle and then I'll use my favorite green tri blend the alpine green blend to do the leaves And then our last little guy here, Earth Brown Shades. When I'm done and I use the lightest of this marker, you can still kind of see like the line I just did at the top of his head. You can tell that it's lighter than the other colors that he's colored with. So this marker just kind of confuses me. I know that they're not all 100% perfect. Um, but it's just why I don't use it very often. But I wanted everyone I was coloring to kind of have a different shade of brown going on. So I decided to use it. And sometimes coloring things not so perfectly blended uh, can actually make them stand out on a card. So feel free to color however you want. Kind of like I did with the leaves. Just throwing some orange and yellow or red and orange mixed in. Um, those colors can pop really well, especially if they're bright or vibrant. Um, so the idea of perfect is kind of, it kind of goes out the window when you think of cards. If you see a card that's super bright and really pretty and you love it and it's vibrant and you look at the details, it's not going to be necessarily perfectly colored by definition if that makes sense like a perfect blend or anything like that the card as a whole is what pops out at you but a lot of people color very differently so feel free to color however you want to color and make the card your own all right so we've colored all of our images I'm going to go ahead and I cut these out 
There are no dyes for the acorn or the leaves, which is kind of annoying to me, honestly, but I'll fussy cut them out later, I guess. I don't know why there wouldn't be a die for items in the stamp set. Like an actual item. I'm not, I don't expect there to be for like sentiments or anything like that, but whatever. So I'm taking this biggest scallop stackable stitched thing from Lawn Fawn. I can't remember what the die set is called. And measuring um, outside of where I need it to be covered so that I have, I know my ink blending area that I need to go to. I'm really bad about that. If I'm just freehanding it, um, I'm just cleaning off my brushes here on a piece of printer paper. Um, if I'm freehanding it, I always never blend like big enough and then I have to keep going and it's kind of annoying. So this time I decided to make myself a barrier that I had to reach in order for uh, me to be able to die cut these out. So I'm going to be mixing the three inks I showed you. I'm pretty sure it's festive berries and the orange one. I know that I didn't choose carved pumpkin. I chose the lighter orange, I think. I just can't remember what it's called, but I did show you earlier each one. And then the yellow is scattered straw. I decided to go with the warmer yellow over the brighter. I think the brighter one is cooler. I don't know. My warms and my cools, but this one looks warmer to me. So it's scattered straw versus like the squeezed lemonade. So I usually blend... I blend a color and then I blend the other one over it and then I take like I blended red then I blended orange and then I took the red one and made sure those two blended better. I'm just picking up tiny hairs with my tweezers by the way. Then I blended yellow and then take the orange one and blend those together. So now I'm just spraying some water and picking them up with my tissues and I'm going to spray a few more times before I'm happy and have enough kind of water picked up off of it. So I'm just dabbing. I don't let mine sit. I'm not sure why people do that. I don't think it takes that long to pick up water or react, but you do whatever you want. Um, I'm not that patient, so I'm just gonna pick up the water. I think there are more little water spots on here or water reactive spots than you can see. But now what I want to do is I'm going to put some of the each color of the ink on there and I'm going to coat, I'm going to cover up the other colors so that I'm only splattering the red on red, if that makes sense. And this doesn't go as well as I thought it was. I end up having to add, you know, more ink and more water eventually. So I do show you some of it. I pause for some of it too. Cause I was just annoyed at how long it was taking and this video was already going to be pretty long. Um, but I have to get even more ink after this. And then I'm going to do the same with the orange and the yellow. And it looks kind of silly, but I like how it turned out after I cut it out with the Lawn Fawn um, stitched scallop stackables, I think is what they would be called if the uh, algorithm is correct. Um, they look, it looks good eventually. And then I do heat set it because I don't want to wait for the splatters to dry. And I don't want them to also um, kind of look like the water reactive portions. I want them to be color that stands out. Um, and I just, I really haven't done this before. I've seen plenty of people do it, but it was kind of hard. So uh, it took a while to get it fully dry. And when I blend something like this, just so you're aware, when I send the die cut, like the large die cut through my die cut machine, I put a piece of printer paper over, especially with this die, it has a big open center. I put a piece of printer paper over it when I send it through because the ink, the ink that I blended, tends to get on my die cutting panels what are they called the plate the ink gets like mashed into the plate so the next thing I run through if it's like white cardstock gets ink all over it and it's super annoying so I've just started to protect the ink from getting onto my cutting plates um 
So if you have to, if that happens to you, I mean, you only do it once because I messed up something I was trying to do because I got ink all over it from the thing I had just die cut. I was very annoyed. Um, these card bases, I really can't remember what I cut them down to. I know it's five and a quarter by something else. And just measure the back where the stitching is because you don't want the card the white card to show through you want this panel that you made to be the star so you want to cut your card base down to whatever matches kind of where the stitching is or just inside the stitching and then just measure it that way and trim it and score it at half um so here i am just kind of figuring out where i want each each bear and stuff to go and then i pause to fussy cut out all of my leaves and my acorns because there are no dyes for them. And then I'm going to use um, not the sentiments from the set, but I'm using Autumn Blessings from my favorite things because I want a larger sentiment because I don't have as much to fill the space with my images. And I want the sentiment to take up more room to make the card look more full. I don't want a bunch of like negative background space. So I'm using. Um, it's stamping pretty gray because of the ink. It's just reacting with the ink blending. And no matter how many times I do it, I don't think it's going to be that black. So it's just going to be kind of a dark gray. Um, the sentiments that come with this st stamp set, the Happy Fall, is that what it's called? Um, are cute, but it would be better on like a smaller area or if I weren't having a scene going on where I needed to fill some sky space basically and I am absolutely in love with this hey there pumpkin from the autumn blessings from my favorite things I think it's so cute and so that's going to go with the uh the bear that's holding the pumpkin and looking at the squirrel so I'm just going to kind of figure out where I want them the sunflower is going to go in front of the pumpkin so I'm going to glue the pumpkin down first And I thought about maybe using the the scallop die I cut for the background to cut out um, green cardstock and cut like a grassy border. Um, but I honestly just kind of like the background floating there. I didn't want to cover up too much of the red. And I also, I lied, there is green on this card, on the sunflower. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but I didn't want... To, I just kind of wanted to keep it very fall colors. And I didn't want to throw too much green in there. And um, I think it looks fine just the way it is. It's an imaginary ground that they're standing on. You can pretend it's there. And then all of my leaves are just going to kind of be flying in the wind around them. It'll be a blustery day. And so I'm just kind of picking, I want to make sure I leave enough for the other card as well. So I'm picking, I thought I wanted an odd number of leaves, but I think I end up with an even number. Usually the rule is that when you're doing something like this, an odd number is just going to look better mathematically. Um, but I put six leaves and it was fine. It just kind of worked with the scene. And then I gave the squirrel some extra acorns he's sharing with the bear, if the bear wants any. And then this bear, as you probably saw me set up earlier, he's actually, he's made to look as if he's like sitting on the stump. So that's why he's bent a little bit. He could also be bending down, so you could tilt him a little bit if he were bending down and like handing something to the squirrel. Or if you put the squirrel holding the acorn, it's like he's handing the acorn to the bear. So the bear doesn't have to be sitting. I've seen cards with him like just tilted and it looks like he's bending down. And that works too. And then I just pictured having some kind of random acorns and leaves around the base of the stump there. And then I still wanted the rest of the leaves to be kind of flying in the air. So I pre-placed them around and then I will be sticking those down. So this way, instead, I'm just putting the dot of glue on the card and sticking that down, kind of like you do with sequins. Sometimes it's a little easier. And then I'll be using some Nouveau Glitter Drops. 
just to kind of spice up the card a little bit. And again, I didn't do white accents. I think I just have so much going on. This is the Gold Coast one um, that I just forget to do white accents. So I'll probably add some to these cards after the fact, but uh, I haven't yet. They're still sitting on my desk. Um, I just wanted to add some kind of sparkly goodness to the fall cards. And I decided to totally sparkle his scarf because the dark red will still show through. Um, but yeah, I'll probably add some white accents. Maybe I'll add some to the bird and I can cover up his eye smear. And yeah, I thought these turned out pretty cute. I don't do a lot of ink blending, honestly, because it takes forever to dry and it's very messy and sticky and... When I do, that's why I made two backgrounds, because I don't ink blend very often, and I figured I should make two, and I had enough images to make two cards, so there's that. Anyway, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys for Watercolor Wednesday. Thank you for watching, bye.